It's great to have you here with us tonight on Creme 2 News. I'm Cody Proctor. Gonzaga Bulldogs faced off against the Texas Longhorns tonight. Our own Travis Green joining us now for a Bulldog breakdown. Yeah, Cody, what a night at the kennel. The first ever top five matchup at McCarthy Athletic Center and the Bulldogs. Well, they did not disappoint. Gonzaga rolls over fifth ranked Texas 86 to 74 and they did it all led by Drew Timmy. What a game for the junior forward who happens to be from Texas. He was really looking forward to this game and you can tell by this stat line 37 points, seven rebounds and three assists. The Bulldogs were dominant in the first half, half up 47 to 27 as the teams headed to the locker room and Timmy. Well, he had 22 points at that point, shooting nine for 10 from the field. If you do the math there, he almost had as much points as Texas did themselves. He would finish 15 of 19 uh, from the field. Simply put, an incredible game from him. If Timmy was Batman, Rasir Bolton was Robin. He had 16 points in the highlight of the night, a buzzer beater to cap off the explosive first half. That's how things were going for the Bulldogs to open this one. And you can't talk about this game without mentioning the defense. The Bulldogs had it in the first half. Of course, the offense shined, but the defense, well, they held fifth ranked Texas to just, as you heard, 27 points in one half of play. That is insane. Andrew Nemhart and Hunter Salas with two steals a piece. All in all, a dominant effort in front of the hometown crowd. Lots to be happy about tonight if you're a Bulldog fan. Of course, we'll have post game reaction with for you on Crim 2 News at 11. Sports Director Brenna Green will have it all for you, so make sure you tune in. Cody, I'll send it back to you. Thanks so much, Travis. And also looking ahead to tomorrow's Seattle Seahawks game against the Green Bay Packers. It'll be returned to the field for both teams' quarterbacks. Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers now cleared to play after testing positive for COVID-19 last week. Rodgers remained asymptomatic and is expected to return to the field along with Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson. Wilson making his return after being benched for three games due to a finger injury. Wilson says he rehabbed diligently in hopes of cutting his recovery time in half. Instead of returning in eight weeks, he made it back in four. I feel great. I feel really close. Um, I'm not, not, not 100 percent yet, but I'm pretty dang close. I would say uh, I'm the 90 percentile, if not higher, um, you know, so I, I feel great. Um, I feel I, I got great conviction uh, about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. My mindset's better than ever. You can watch the Seahawks play the Green Bay Packers tomorrow right here on Creme 2. Kickoff is right at 1.25 p.m. Then be sure to join us for a special edition of Creme 2 News right after the game. Well, there were some clear skies and then some cloudy skies today, and then that rain started dropping once again for us. We're joined now by meteorologist Michelle Boss. And Michelle, what can we expect for the rest of the night as we head into that Seattle Seahawks Sunday? Well, during the overnight hours, we are going to see some additional rain across the inland northwest, but I think our impact is going to switch from rain to wind, or the main weather impact will be switching from rain to wind as we head on in to Sunday and then especially into Monday as well. But uh, we have seen a little bit of rainfall this uh, late afternoon and early evening in the Spokane area, just about a hundredth of an inch at the Spokane Airport and out in Cheney. But uh, Sandpoint's picked up another quarter of an inch up north, and then in the Pullman area, about a tenth of an inch, and you can see um, some lighter amounts across the inland northwest. Satellite and radar pictures showing scattered showers across the region. It's going to zoom into the Spokane area. It's kind of been slow to get started and generally light, but we do expect that wet weather to continue during the overnight hours. Temperatures have already bottomed out there in the upper 30s in Deer Park and Coeur d'Alene, lower 40s in Spokane. I don't think it's going to get any colder. In fact, temperatures may actually go up a couple degrees overnight. 43 in Moses Lake, 42 in Omac, and 49 in Lewiston. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Yes, it is looking pretty soggy, but again, I think uh, the rain's going to let up on Sunday, and we're just going to see some strong winds. Could see wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour tomorrow with highs in the upper 50s and just as windy on Monday. Thanks so much, Michelle. Well, moving on now to some more of our top stories tonight. Spokane Public Library has closed all branches today after threats were made on social media last night. The library decided to close the libraries out of an abundance of caution for staff and the public as Spokane police investigate. Police say those threats were violent and made to an unidentified library location. The closure was only for today. However, all Spokane libraries, except for the South Hill branch, are regularly closed Sundays and Mondays, so most branches will not be reopened until Tuesday. Being homeless during the winter months presents its own dangerous challenges, and some city officials say Spokane isn't doing enough to help. 
But according to Spokane City Mayor Nadine Woodward's office, the city of Spokane is continuing to work on addressing and finding solution to our area's homelessness issue. And finding those solutions is a work in progress. But the city council says what they're doing isn't working fast enough. We are doing more than we ever have. But the problem is getting so much worse that I don't know that we're getting ahead of it. And I would say we're, I shouldn't say that, we are not getting ahead of it. And that's, that's the challenge. Woodward's office says in the past year, there's been a focus on securing contracts for heating and cooling centers around the city. Truth Ministries and the Guardians Foundation each entered a year round contract with the city to provide night by night and day use shelter services. The Salvation Army opens the Way Out Center in mid-December, aimed at housing 60 people at a time. And the mayor's office confirmed that next year's proposed budget includes building an additional large shelter outside the downtown area. Over $2 billion in student loan forgiveness will soon be going to public service workers. Yesterday, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona announced an estimated 30,000 workers should expect to have some of their student loans forgiven as part of the public service loan forgiveness program. In the past, that program has had issues with strict requirements for forgiveness. Now borrowers need to meet three requirements to be eligible, be employed full time by a U.S. federal, state, local or tribal government or not for profit organization, have direct loans and make 120 qualifying monthly payments, which is about 10 years of payments. Still to come tonight, more fallout from the Astro World tragedy as a funeral was held for a teenage victim. The latest after the break.